I'm Adam Adams. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear Podcast. Music advice coming at you. Coming at you today, sponsored by AnyTune. Hey, do yourself a favor. Go to anytune.us and check out one of the most useful tools for learning music anywhere. It's fantastic. It's it's this When we talk about active listening and practicing efficient practice, this is like the intersection of active listening and, and just uber efficient practicing that you can do with this great app. Um, you can use it on your Mac. You can use it on on your iPhone. Android's coming very soon. They That's just right. came out with that beta version. And you know the idea is this gives you a chance, yeah, to do the typical things, slow things down, keeps the pitch the same, great for transcribing. But the magic feature is the being able to take an instrument away and you can practice along with the masters after you've learned and transcribed that solo, which AnyTune already helped you to do. Yeah. Then you can play yeah, it along. Yeah. That's you right. know, how about how about a little play along with Ron Carter and Tony Williams? Herbie, get out the way. I know your solo, yeah. buddy. No, 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 that's right. You maybe you spent all month with just Herbie so you can hear what he's doing, and then you right. learn it, and then you're like, all right, Herbie. Yeah. But it's my turn. And That's you take right. them out, and then you're just playing with Ron and Tony. It is truly fantastic. Go to anytune.us. It's amazing. Yeah, that's right. Anytune.us slash. Oh, you'll, you'll hear, hear it. it. That's, that's right. right. We have, they have our a special own, little page for us. Our own know. page. Go to anytune.com uh, slash. You'll hear it. And we're here on YouTube today. Thanks, YouTube, for joining us today. We are talking about four bebop hacks that'll <laughs> blow up blow your mind oh blow your mind okay is that I, hacky I, I enough something blow, blowing up anytime yeah. we do hack in a title i'm like we are such hacks this yeah we is... are <laughs> but we're bringing the hacks people like the hacks That's but right. these i think are useful these are like um there's nothing hidden about these but i think sometimes they're not talked about enough you know a lot of guys and gals will play this kind of stuff and then it's like wait what was that you did yeah and they'll like oh i don't know it was just something i played so we we, we try to think of some that we could explain and that hopefully you can infuse into your playing, try them out, learn them in different keys, try out these different techniques, see if it is something that you want to use for your playing, not just when you're playing bebop. This is just, you know, they're bebop-ish type things, but they can be used, I think, in a lot of different situations. That's right. Let's go in with number one. Man, I don't know about you, but I feel like this idea of diatonic enclosures, just it's really more about like how to play melodies and, and create melodies out of very simple material. The older I get, the more experienced I get at playing piano and learning about bebop and jazz, the more I, I realize how important these kinds of things are, right? Like, what can I do very simply with right. just just the, the core, the, the, the scale of, of the chord that I'm on? Yeah. So this is, we're calling it this diatonic enclosures. It's really a way to surround a note of a chord. So let's say you're playing a B flat major scale. Or that, those are your note choices, right? You got yeah. a B flat major six nine chord, right? Well, we, we can just play, let's say, a D. Um, but to get a cool bebop sound, you can surround this in various ways without even going outside of the B-flat major scale. Check this one out. What do you know about that? Or how about this? Right, you can, you can vary this in different ways. Just taking the two notes, the one above it and the one below it, right? Yeah. How many different combinations can you come up with around that note? You know, like just doing that, yeah. we have so many options and, and stuff like, like mixing this in with scales or arpeggios, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Now we're, we're sounding like bebop musicians. That's right. And, and you know, one, one way to do this, and you know, we've talked about this before with regular enclosures, which are typically um, either chromatic on both sides or chromatic on one side and diatonic. And this is, is a great other concept because you're entirely within the scale. Uh, but you can think of like nice rhythmic based riffs that you would play and then add this onto them. So it might be like, yeah, yep. Or, you know, it's so many different cool little things or just, you know, just, just varying up the rhythms. Really. And, and then you could start expanding it to not just the surrounding diatonic notes, right? So, right, you could do that. And then maybe, you know, like you could use any diatonic tonic, tonic note above it or any diatonic note below it. So instead of, maybe it's, you know, mm -hmm. like you can start creating melodies. It's not 
traditionally an enclosure, but like you can use it the same way instead of like you could do, you know, yep. move these around in that scale. The, the, the safe spacer, safe spacer? No, the space saver. Space saver. <laughs> space invader. The space saver mentally in this is that we're only thinking B flat major, right? Yeah. So there's no other notes that we have to know or know or, or think about. We're just thinking in this shape of just like. Like those, that's all just B flat major surrounding target notes. Yes. And I mean, a lot of times we'll, we'll think like, oh, well, that's, that's not one of the more exciting, sexier kind of bebop things. But this is like, we're always combining these with other things. Yeah. But also, this is an example of some really good restrictive practice. Take a little pressure off you thinking about chromaticism or blues or some of the things that we're going to get into and think about like, Really effective practice is when you can take something restrictive yep. and make it work and sound good. Once you're improvising and playing, you can pull anything out at any time. There's no restrictions. But I think it's very good to practice in a restricted way. There's nothing better than just straight scale notes. If you can make that sound good, you'll be able to add in a little bit of, of, of neighbor chromaticism and stuff to really make it work. Well, and, and where I got this from was I was transcribing some Clifford Brown. Mm. And Clifford Brown is a master at this. I was, yeah. I, I was actually struck in his lines that I was transcribing at how much diatonic things like yes. this he was doing. He was yeah. so good at it. You know? And a lot of triplets. A lot of triplets. triplets. Yeah, right, exactly. Instead, diatonic. you can do like, or you could do, you know, yep. all diatonically is the way he, he, and he would throw in chromaticism for effect, but it, I, I realized like, I want to master this as yeah. well as Clifford Brown did of just being able to play within that scale. So, yep. hey, by the way, if you're watching on YouTube, how about a little like and subscribe right now? You know what I'm saying? If you found that helpful, smash that like button, subscribe, turn the little bell on, right? <laughs> it's not gonna it. kill you, it's yeah. free. The bell's <laughs> diatonic, you know what I'm saying? That's right, ding. Nice. All right, what do we have for number two? Number we, two, we have blues infusion. This sounds, oh. it's either, this sounds like it could be a band on a on a Cialis commercial, like like you know some middle aged dudes getting together in their garage. The name of the band is Blues Infusion. That's, a, that's funny because Blue Pill. That's good. Oh, yeah. Sorry here. Okay, so this is like we're talking about um, you know bluesy stuff, but specifically within bebop. So it might be. Ooh. Yeah. Let me let me do a better one here. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, the the way to do this is to throw it in the middle of a phrase. I love okay? it. A lot yeah. of different ways to do it, of course. But like, let's say you got an F F minor seven going to B flat seven to E flat major. Let's see. And then you come out of it real straight, kind of bebop, right? Uh, and what yeah, I'm yeah. doing there is, you know, a lot of ways to do it, but I'm playing, messing with the blue scale of where I'm going, not yeah. where I'm at. So you could do, but that's a little, a little much. So I'm thinking E flat blue scale. Whoa, my little cable there. Why can't I have nice things? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Woo. That kind of thing. Uh, and don't, don't sleep on the major blue scale. This works really well, like, like. Right, you know, so if we're in a two five one here in G, we got our A minor, a little D seven alt maybe. Yep. yep. And then when we get to that G, how about a little G major blues scale? That's really like the E minor blues scale. E minor scale. blues scale, right? Yeah. That's good. That's good. Um, I'm just thinking there's. Um, you know, just over the just over a minor too. Like these, are, where you're leading to is good. But I think even over a, a minor or a dominant, uh, the way you can kind of mask it is throw in a little bit of like bebopish dominant seventh and major seventh along with the blues. So. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's fun. Love it. Fun okay. Stuff. Blues infusion. What? Blues infusion. Today on NPR Music. Okay, uh, number three. This Driveway is a, songs. That's right. Diminished arpeggio on a dominant chord. Ooh. This is such an easy hack, and this will make you sound so good so fast. So again, let's go back to our, our B flat seven or two five to B flat. Right. 
So on this F7 chord, right, if we think about this as an F7 flat nine, which by the way, that's kind of up to you to put it in there. In most cases. Dealer's choice. Dealer's choice on a dominant chord, especially a five chord to a one. You have that choice of doing like a flat nine, you know, an F13 flat nine with that G flat in there. So what a lot of people may not understand is this is actually based off of that 13 flat nine. It's kind of based off of the half whole diminished scale, right? That F half whole diminished scale. And with that comes some arpeggios, some diminished chord arpeggios. Right, the four notes of G flat, A, C, and E flat together. Check this out. This is gonna blow your mind, Peter. Yeah. I, I know you already know this, but I'm still gonna blow your mind. Wow. Check this out. Yeah. And then wait, wait, not I'm done sorry. yet. Ooh, uh-huh, I like uh-huh. It. What if we took it up another inversion? What do you know about that? And how about finally? So that's four, right? That's four, that's right? The diminished cycle. So these arpeggios, right? A, uh, e flat, G flat, A, and C in any combination, they resolve. They kind of surround yeah. a note of this B flat major six chord, right? So you yeah. get this. Very this soothing. is so handy when you want to do things like, right? Mm -hmm. Or how about, how about that yep. kind of thing? That works great. great. Yeah, and you're kind of coming out of a little surround to a target area. Exactly. It gives you a natural enclosure. Right. Yeah. So I'll just give one little extension. I think it's this is kind of related because it is based upon the half hold diminished as well. Is this a bonus? It's a little bonus. Should maybe do uh, put the bonus bell on for Bang. the bonus. Why don't you put the bell on for the bonus? You know what I'm saying? Like bonus and subscribe. bell. Yeah. There you go. So we got. Um, we'll stick with the F7 here. The five going to the B flat major. So those are the the, the straight diminished arpeggios. But if you start up on that C. So this is a diminished arpeggio where you're subbing out the major seventh, which is part of, it's still part of your half hold diminished. I like that a lot. That's good. And then you can go through the same, through the same. And that's gonna resolve that same notes within the major six I love well. that so I mean this is the beauty of the you can bring it down to that that diminished scale yeah I love man this is what's so great about the diminished scales it's so symmetrical that you can do cool stuff yeah and you can kind of think about it like in advance a little bit like C minor 7 to F7 to B flat what yeah so even though you're on a C minor Can't do that. You damn sure can't do that in Missouri, man. I know not, that's not for a fact. Anymore, Legis anymore. State legislature won't, won't let right. that happen. Get out of town. So that's the diminished arpeggio on the dominant chord. Again, yes. uh, no more useful tool in an improviser's arsenal. No. I've just always wanted to say that phrase. Yeah. Number four is the chromatic line shift. What do we chromatic. mean by the chromatic line shift? It's where we, we take it up a chromatic... That. Oh, right. During okay. the line. That's right. So, you know, a lot of times if we think about, um, so 2-5-1 to C. Yeah. So you might go E flat minor to A flat 7, kind of adding on a half step above yeah. as part of your melodic line. Right, before, right. You know, even though it's not officially there. So it'd be like instead of, you go like, Ooh. right? So it'd be like. That kind of a thing. So, E flat minor seven to A flat seven. Yeah. You look confused. Well, I'm just or bored. I don't know. No, no, no. I'm just <laughs> trying to. I'm, I'm wrapping my head around it. So, slower. are you doing it in the middle? Or are you doing it in the, in the beginning of the line? Well, this would be in the beginning of the line. I think next level will be kind of in the middle. But it's just like a typical. Well, like, like say you're in your. Then you've got one bar of B flat minor to E flat seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'd be like. Ah, 
Okay. Um, you know, you're just layering that in, especially on faster tempos, that works good. But what, what this actual number four is, is just throwing that in, in the middle of the line, as opposed to just being like, dee, 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 like where you're layering it. So right, right, right. the same example. Woof. Come on. So you, so you put a line, like instead of ding, 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 be like, All right, all right, all right, hold on. Hold so on. you're starting at the regular one, shifting up just a little bit, and then bring it down. Try it again. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I got it. I yeah, think I got it. Woo. So that's like two, five, one to so C. How come my notes sound like that? No, no, no. It's just, are you doing a two five in the two five? Is that what you're doing? Uh, kind of. So like D minor for bar to G seven to C major, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I actually like to do it even where you shift up and then you don't come back down. So it'd be like D minor, G seven, E flat minor, A flat seven, C major. Oh, what? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. hip. Yeah, and, and a lot of times these things, especially when it's going by quicker, like you just do a little, it's, like you do something very solid rhythmically. Yeah. You know, it might be like, uh, where you're just continuing along the line and you're just using this as like a little bit of a melodic, like a harmonic area to go with the same melodic shape. So in other words, like, yeah, typically we think about going like, yeah, yeah. Where you're taking something and then you're repeating it. Yeah, and that can be cool at times, but this is like one line that just weaves through it. You're blowing my mind. You are blowing my mind. Yeah. It's almost more of just a concept that, than a, like you have to play it this way. Woo, okay, I got, I got lots to shed on. Well, we hope you uh, are going to shit on that, too. That's good stuff, Pete. You know what I'm saying? Dang. Yours are good, too, man. Yours are good, too. You Mine know? are okay, but that was really good. Why, why can't we have nice things, man? Why can't we have nice <laughs> things? Uh, We're well, still getting acclimated to the, what are we calling this? The pod? Pothole. Pothole. It's like a food. That sounds, <laughs> the way you said it, it sounded like pothole. I know. Pot, this, <laughs> is our, this is our giant pothole here. It's, a it's pod. our socially distanced um, yeah. pod, pod, pod hall. We're trying to stay safe yeah. as things are opening up, and yet still getting worse somehow <laughs> yeah. yeah the world is opening up come on out the water's fine don't yeah. mind the sharks <laughs> that's right that's right uh no but this is really fun to do man I'm, we yeah. got that we got a brand new hammer 88 you know got I, the dopios we're I back got, to dopio i got mine at home and it's i'm 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 hoarding it now good stuff so yeah if you guys enjoyed this and you want to see more like this just hit the like button subscribe to us we, we're doing these every week here put Check, that bonus bell on put that bonus you might get a jonas bonus so you can that's the extra kid in the jonas brothers <laughs> yeah, you didn't know that yeah so um we're here every week on youtube we've got a couple of tutorials coming out you're going live at least a couple times a week on youtube we got a lot of fun stuff happening yeah, that's right that's right the podcast check us out as you're getting back in your car wherever you enjoy podcasts spotify apple Podcasts, google play we're available give us a like and a, a review seven stars or whatever and uh, we're sponsored as always well not as always but we hope forever by any tune go to any tune.us slash you'll hear it uh, for an entry point to that you'll be able, we'll be able to point you to the iPhone app to the Mac app to the Windows app and coming very soon it might even be out by the time you guys are hearing this the Android app and you what? can get it on their beta program if you're not already on that but it, it doesn't matter the platform it's a brilliant tool to um, really guide you through more efficient practice being able to hear things on your favorite recordings that you couldn't hear before to be able to isolate things um, it's a tool to be able to hear better to learn better to transcribe better to understand music better and it's also a thing just to give you some help it's almost like a personal trainer for your practice because you can um, set up certain you know goals and markers and and parameters and it just takes a lot of the heavy manual lifting off of you as you practice and yeah it really is special man go to anytune.us slash you'll hear it to check it out uh, android users check out that new beta that's right till tomorrow you'll hear it or a couple of days <laughs>